Hi everyone, I'm Elena with Stoika and in today's video I will be speaking about three best practices to look out for when you're building a HubSpot automated workflow. In a previous video I created a workflow end-to-end -end, so if you haven't seen it, go check it out. The first best practice that I want to speak about is setting up the same communication subscription type for your automated emails as for the people you will be enrolling in the workflow. What I mean by that, let's take the example of my uh, workflow here. It's a lead nurturing workflow. If I go to my first email um, in this workflow, it's a thank you email. If I go into setting settings, um, the subscription type that I've uh, selected is marketing information and uh, going back to my enrollment criteria for this workflow is contacts who have filled out lead generation um, ebook download form. And if I go into that form, um, I will see that I have several options in here for the subscription type and I should be selecting um, the marketing information type so people can receive my email. If I were to select a different subscription subscription type, such as, let's say, uh, service email, then people will not be able to receive, uh, people enrolled in this automation will not be able to receive my emails. So this is super important and it's a mistake that's very easy to make. Um, the second uh, best practice that I want you to be aware of is setting up the unenrollment and um, suppression um, criteria. So if you have people enrolled into multiple workflows, consider if you need to remove them from the previous ones. So one example is when someone becomes a customer, do you want to remove them from previous workflows or not? And most likely yes, because you don't want to, you know, keep nurturing them when they have become a customer already. Um, and the second thing to be aware of, if you have people enrolling into a workflow uh, from another one, make sure you uh, select the right option, uh, whether to keep um, a contact in the workflow, even if they don't meet uh, the enrollment conditions. And I'm going to give out an example here just to make it easy to understand. So let's say you have a downloadable guide on your website. It's gated uh, behind the form and people who download, um, who fill in and download that material are enrolled into, let's say, a lead nurturing uh, workflow. At the same time, you are setting up a LinkedIn campaign, you're using um, a lead gen uh, form on LinkedIn, and the contacts coming from LinkedIn, you want to initially enroll them into a workflow, um, you know, set up their um, communication subscription type to perhaps let's say marketing and then from the first workflow enroll them into the lead nurturing workflow because the enrollment condition is not met for people who uh, are coming from LinkedIn you need to select uh, the option to keep them in this workflow um, even if those contacts don't meet the enrollment condition so this is super important because you want uh, them to be enrolled and nurtured as well. And the last uh, best practice that I want you to be aware of is the execution times um, of your workflow. So you can select between uh, any time and specific times. And if you are in B2B, you might be tempted to say, uh, you know what, I want to message um, my contacts during the week, which is great. Uh, however, if someone downloads a guide, let's say on a Sunday, um, they probably expect to receive an automated email right away. And if you've selected Monday to Friday, um, then you will be sending that email the second day, which of course is not ideal. I suggest you think from the very beginning what, a, what needs to happen and what's the best timing for that to happen and set up uh, the times to execute accordingly. Okay, so those were the three best practices that I wanted to speak about today. So one is to check um, that you have the same communication subscription type for your emails as for the people enrolled in an automation. Uh, the second one is 
to check the unenrollment and suppression criteria and the third one to check the sending and execution times for your workflows. Um, that would be all. Let me know if you wanted to add something else. Bye.